J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with She Shall Have Music from the picture of the same name. <laughs> Summer's really with us now. Today's the day when summer becomes official. But hot weather isn't so hard to bear nowadays. Air conditioning gives us cooler movie houses, restaurants, and trains, and Jell-O gives us cooler meals. For Jell-O is deeply refreshing, delightfully cool and satisfying. It's also a very quick, simple dessert to prepare. You can make Jell-O well ahead of time in the morning and then pop it into your refrigerator. Or you can make it on short notice because it's set so quickly. And when you bring Jell-O to the table, you've every reason to be proud. For whether you serve it plain or in fancy molds, whether you put fruit in it or add whipped cream, Jell-O's delicious true fruit flavor is always a very welcome part of the meal. Of all gelatin desserts, Jell-O and only Jell-O brings you that extra rich fruit taste. Use it to brighten your menus this summer. Use it whenever you want a warm weather salad or dessert. Only just be sure you get genuine Jell-O. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. we bring to you for the last time this season that worn-out master of ceremonies, Jack Benny. Well, well, well. Hello again. This is Jack Benny coming to you slightly frayed, a bit weary, and fresh as a daisy in an ash can. <laughs> and believe me, folks, I'm sure due for a vacation. Well, aren't you going to take one, Jack? Uh, no, Don, I can't. You know, I'm going to make that picture for Paramount. I accepted that butler's part they gave me. Well, that's practically a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that. You know, they promised to build it up a little. Uh, what are you planning to do this summer, Don? Well, I'm staying right on the Jell-O summer show, Jack. I'm uh, going to take your place for the next three months. Oh, you're going to be the master of ceremony till I get back? Yes. Sir, and oh boy, I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can say is good luck to you, Don, and I hope you do a good job. Of course, not too good. I, after all, I do want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Jack. I'll hold myself down a little. Oh, that's it. Thanks, pal. Thanks. <laughs> hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Hey, Mary, you know, Don Wilson is going to be the master of ceremonies on our summer program. He's stepping into my shoes. He is? See, Jack, what are you going to do? Oh, I'll just walk around in my stocking feet. <laughs> what do you plan for this summer, Mary? Oh, I haven't decided yet. I don't know whether to go to Honolulu, China, or buy an ice cream cone. Well, if I were you, Mary, I'd get an ice cream cone. <laughs> sure. I can always go to China. <laughs> I think so, yes. Hello, Jack. Happy Father's Day. Oh, hello, Kenny. Say, this is Father's Day, isn't it? I forgot all about it. Isn't that awful? Gee, you know, I intended to send Dad a tie or something, but it slipped my mind. Gosh, I certainly am negligent. What does negligent mean, Jack? Cheap. <laughs> it does not. Anyway, Mary, did you remember Father's Day? Did I? <laughs> I just sent my mother the swellest book. That's fine. Why'd you send your mother a book on Father's Day? Papa can't read. <laughs> Mary, you really need a vacation, huh? What are you going to do this summer, Kenny? Oh, I'm going to take a long rest, Jack. I'm pretty tired. Well, I don't blame you. I know how you feel singing a whole song every Sunday night. <laughs> see, I don't see how you do it. Yes, and I have to stand up to sing, too. <laughs> Next year, we'll get him a couch. <laughs> well, Kenny, you take a real nice vacation and relax. Oh, uh, Jack. Yes, yeah, Don. Johnny Green wants to know if you brought your violin with you tonight. Oh, he does, uh. Do you hear that, Mary? Johnny wants to know if I brought my violin. Maybe he wants you to play with the orchestra. Yeah, he waited till the last program. <laughs> well, Johnny, were you looking for me? Yes. Uh, say, Jack, did you bring your violin along tonight? Yes, sir. I have it right here. You want me to play the next number with you? No, we're looking for a fly swatter. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm going to hand you fellas the surprise of your life. 
This summer, I'm going to take a few more lessons and brush up a little bit. Then you'll see. A few more? Yeah. Go on, you never took any violin lessons. I did, too. Then your teacher didn't. <laughs> Oh, well, let's drop it already. Now, Jack, now, Jack, don't let it get your goat. This being our last program, we made up our minds to give you a good ribbing, but really and truly, it was all in fun, and we love you. Don't we, fellas? You, you bet. bet. Hey, Don, I don't mind. I see you did that together. <laughs> After all, you know, it's part of the program. Oh, yes, by the way, Johnny has something particularly that he wants to say to you. He has? Uh, what is it, Johnny? Uh, we have a little surprise for you, Jack. You've been a great guy to work with, and you've always treated us square, and... Oh, well, thank you. So, on, on behalf of the boys in the orchestra and the members of the cast and myself, I want to present you with this pure Irish linen handkerchief. <laughs> oh, gee, a handkerchief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boys, I really don't know what to say. It's, it's things like this that made Scotland famous. You know? <laughs> did all did all of you did all of you give it to me? Yes, Jack. The orchestra boys each chipped in two dollars, and the rest of the cast gave from five to ten dollars a piece. Gee whiz! How much was the handkerchief? A quarter. <laughs> what happened to the rest of the money? Well, we had about seventy dollars left, and we didn't know what else to get you, so we all went out and had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly do want to thank you for the handkerchief and the good time. And I want to thank you, Jack, for giving us inspiration to carry on. And I want to thank you, Jack, for giving us help and encouragement. And I want to thank Jell-O for giving us six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Why don't you say that for next week? You'll be running the program yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Kenny Baker in advance for singing the next number called Would You from the Motion Picture San Francisco. Sing, Kenneth. <laughs> Kenny Baker singing, Would You? And for the last time this season, Kenny, I'm going to say that was very good. And he stood up to sing it, too. Say, Jack, what about your pictures? You settled that argument with Paramount, didn't you? Oh, sure. They finally gave in. You know, we start shooting tomorrow. So who's going to be your leading lady? That's the only trouble, Mary. I'm having such a hard time finding one. That's funny. I didn't have any trouble. I just found the cutest leading man. Oh, boy, is he handsome. But, Mary, you're not going to make a picture. Who wants to? <laughs> oh, I see. Who's that knocking on the door, Mary? The sound effects man. <laughs> Never mind that. See who it is. Uh, come in. I'd like to see Mr. Benny, please. Tell him it's Mr. Lyson. Oh, hello, Mr. Lyson. Come right in. Oh, Mary, this is Miss Lyson, you know, the man who's going to direct my picture. Hello, Mary. Hello. Gee, I wonder if he likes me, too. Uh, what, uh, what brings you here, Mr. Lyson? Well, Jack, you know, we start shooting the picture tomorrow. I thought I'd come over and get a few things straightened out. Oh, that's fine. I brought my cameraman along. This is Mr. Sparkle. We call him Sparky. Oh, how do you do? Uh, how are you? Uh, who's that third fellow, Jack? Quiet, that's the camera. <laughs> Gee, I... <laughs> See, I hope, uh, I hope I'll photograph all right. Oh, I think you'll be okay, Jack. Of course, your hair is a little gray, but we can photograph you with your hat on. Hmm. A butler with a hat on. <laughs> uh, won't I, won't I be too tall? Well, you can take your shoes off. That's fine, a barefooted butler with a hat on. <laughs> Must be a society picture. <laughs> Mary. And another thing. Hmm. Those ears should go back a little. My ears? Well, can't you pull my hat down over them? <laughs> well, you can try it. Oh. Now, let me see. Uh, your eyes, they seem to be a little too close together. My eyes? <laughs> there goes that hat down again. <laughs> quiet, quiet. What do you think, Parker? Oh, I guess we can move his eyes back about an inch. Now, now, wait a minute, boys. Anything for anything for art, but don't get him too far back. Eh? We won't. You know what I mean. I don't want people whispering in my eyes. You know, Sparky, his legs could be straightened out a little. Huh, a lot. Gee, Jack, outside of your face and figure, you're perfect. Yeah. No, Jack. You know we shoot your scene tomorrow. I want you to be up in your part. Do you think you know it? I think so. Let yes. me hear it. Now remember, the lovers are seated on the Davenport. 
And as the phone rings, the butler walks in. That's me. Yeah, now read your line. All right. <clears throat> Madam, you're wanted on the phone. Now, how's that, Mr. Lysom? Take it again. <laughs> Madam, you're wanted on the phone. How's that? Well, I think you can get more out of it. Can I hear it again, please? <laughs> Madam, you're wanted on the phone. Was that better? Now, look, Jack. You read the line, all right, but you're not living it. I'm not. <laughs> no, you must think of what you're saying. Now, when you walk into that room, whom do you see? Somebody else getting a job. <laughs> Mary, let me get this, will you? I-, I see my employer's wife in the arms of her lover. Exactly. And you have a message for her, haven't you? Yes, sir. It's an important message, isn't it? Yes, sir. Then let it come out. Come on, try it again. Relax. Relax! <laughs> madam, madam, you are wanted on the phone. Mm. How's, how's that? That's not it at all. Oh. Now let me try and explain the situation. I wish you would. <laughs> now, first of all, where is this woman wanted? On the phone. Exactly. Yeah. She's not wanted on the chandelier, is she? No, sir. No, sir. And she's not wanted on the ceiling, is she? No, sir. Not unless she's a fly. <laughs> Please, Mary. She's wanted on the phone. Yes, sir. Then say it. For the love of my tennis. Madam, you're wanted on the tail. <laughs> the phone, the phone. The phone is wanted on the tail. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Gee, it got me all excited. The phone, the phone. <laughs> See what a phony part. <laughs> you, you got me all mixed up. Now, listen, Lyson, you've been rousing up this part. <laughs> Mary, in the first place, Mr. In the first place, Mr. Gensler said my part would be bigger. Oh, he did, eh? Yes. All right, I'll tell you what. Instead of saying phone, say telephone. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Madam, you're wanted on the telephone. Say, Jack, I know how you can make your part even bigger. Oh. Well, if the madam gets a divorce, you could say, Mademoiselle, you're wanted on the telephone. That's right. If she happens to be French, I can say, Mademoiselle, from Arm and Tears, you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, no, wait a minute, Jack. Don't try to hog the picture. <laughs> I'm not. Don't worry. Come in. Hello, friends. Oh, Clapperman. Cla- what are you doing here? I got a very important message for you. Now, what is it? You're wanted on the telephone. <laughs> Eureka! That's it. That's the way I want that line ready. Come up here, you. Are you alluding to me? <laughs> Yes, yeah, you, Flappy. He wants you to read my line. All right, but make it snappy. I left the hot iron on Mr. Gensler's fence. <laughs> I wish Gensler was in him. <laughs> now, look. I want you to show Mr. Benny how to read that line. What line? You are wanted on the telephone. Wait a minute, Mr. Lyson. This guy is no actor. He's a tailor. That's me, Robert Taylor. <laughs> Imagine Loretta Young playing opposite Clefferman. <laughs> what can I lose? <laughs> well, we're losing a lot of time. Now, would you please try Mr. Benny's line? Madam, you're wanted on the telephone. Madam, you're wanted on the telephone. Try it again. Madam, you're wanted on the telephone. <laughs> Once more, please. Madam, you're wanted on the telephone. Hey, that's fine, Clef. Is that the way you want me to read that line, Mr. Lyson? That's what I want. That's the good question. <laughs> Tonight, Jack Benny starts a summer vacation. So did Mary and Kenny, Johnny Green, and Slapperman. We'll miss all of you, Jack, but just the same as grand to know that you're coming back to us in the fall. When you return October 4th, we hope you'll be good and rested after a swell summer, all ready for another successful Jell-O year. And right now, we want to thank you listeners 
for helping to make this year such a success. You've shown us that you enjoy these programs, and you've shown us in the most practical way of all, you've gone out and bought Jell-O. We hope you'll keep right on buying it, and we also hope you'll keep right on tuning in at the same time, because Jell-O and I are going to stay on the air. Next Sunday, we start the Jell-O Summer Show. I'll be on hand as master of ceremonies, and <laughs> who knows, I may even find a little time to tell you a thing or two about those six delicious flavors. And because we want to keep you in good humor during the summer, we're bringing you Tim Ryan and Irene Noblet, comedy team of radio, stage, and screen, who will keep you so happy you'll forget all about the heat. In addition, you'll hear the smooth rhythms of Don Voorhees and his new Jell-O Orchestra and the thrilling voice of Morton Bow, our tenor. Be with us on our opening night. Listen in next Sunday, same time and station, to the new Jell-O Summer Show. Tim Ryan, Irene Noblet, Morton Bow, Don Voorhees, and yours truly, Don Wilson. This is the last number of the last program in the present Jell-O series, and we'll be back again on Sunday, October 4th. And don't forget, folks, the new Jell-O summer show next Sunday night at the same time, starring Tim Ryan and Irene Noblesse, Don Voorhees Orchestra, and Morton Bow, with Don Wilson as your master of ceremonies. I know you'll like it. I want to take this opportunity of thanking Harry W. Kahn, my author, for his splendid cooperation. I also want to thank Ed Boulogne and Bill Morrow, who have helped me write my radio programs for the past 12 weeks during Mr. Khan's illness. I want to thank Curtis Mitchell and the readers of Radio Guide for making it possible for me to win the Radio Guide contest again this year. Gee, it's a thrill. Say, Jack. What, Mary? Why don't you thank me for something? All right, thanks, Mary. Good night, folks, and many thanks for listening in. <laughs> The arrangement of Love and Bloom heard on tonight's Jell-O program was made for us by Johnny Green. This program has come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.